Hello YouTube! Uh, today I've got a new slide rule and um, so I thought it would be a good time to show you guys a couple uh, well, all three of the slide rules that I've bought in the past week or so. Um, I didn't bring any slide rules here and uh, I really wanted to get some new ones, like a wooden one, you know, a pocket size one, and a metal one. That was my, you know, criteria set. Yeah, that was my set of criteria. Didn't screw up the grammar there at that time. Uh, so here is the most simple one. It's a post-1446, uh, manufactured by the company Sun Hemi in Japan. So you can see that in the case there. It says, uh, made in Japan, but it's, uh, you know, clearly worn off. So opening up the case here, and this is a wooden slide rule, as you can see from the back. And, um, yeah, they showed that upside down. So here's a close-up of the sort of cheat sheet that there is on the back there. Uh, yeah, it should be decent enough to read. Yeah, it's just got a whole bunch of different information. And here's the front of the slide rule. Um, you can see it says, the Frederick Post Company, number 1446. And uh, Sun Hemi, made in Japan there. Slides all right. Very, very smooth. And since I think this is bamboo, I think these were made out of bamboo, it's self-lubricating and so it, it goes very, very smoothly. Um, as you can see on the back here, there's an alternate set of scales. S, L, and T for sine, log, and tangent. Um, focus there, focus, come on. There we go. Yeah, and um, when I put this in backwards, so you, you know you'd flip out, you flip around the scale if you wanted to use it on the slide rule itself, and you can see the difference in shade there. The other side was clearly used way more than this one, and so this one's like pristine white, while the other side is kind of you know faded, just like the rest of the slide rule. Anyway, pretty neat little rule. Uh, you know, nothing special, but it works well, and it's not warped because. As you can see, if I can hold that there properly, the uh, gradations line up perfectly on that side and over here on the right index. So, overall, great slide rule. I like it. It's fun to use. Um, yeah, just in case you were wondering, I'm not necessarily the best at these uh, calculations. I'm not very, very good at it. Um, in fact, I'm not very good at all. I'm, I'm learning. But that's okay because I've got my, you know... Anyway... Uh, oh, let me not take it out of the case for a second and show you the case itself. It says, uh, yeah, it says pick it over there. Um, and it's embossed in the leather. And it should, it says California saddle leather on the, uh, little bottom there with a little skull icon on the back. Here's a belt clip and another pick it logo. I think that comes out better. It's a lot clearer in real life as well. Mm, opening it up. Hey, isn't it a cute little guy? Yeah, this is the regular one. You can see the differences there. Um, this is the Picket Model 300. and Oh, I guess Model Number 300, if you want to be uh, specific there. There we go. And um, when I got it, actually the slide was frozen, and that's a common problem with these um, metal slide rules. Yeah. Okay. One more thing, that brown stuff you see in the screw there, that's not corrosion. It's just, uh, you know, residue from the leather case because it's crumbling off as I insert and remove it from the sheath. The problem with these metal slide rules is that they need constant lubrication or they need to be, you know, used. Otherwise, the slides freeze up. So I put a tiny dab of silicone grease on there and, um, you know, rubbed it on the slide and then inserted, you know, the slide into the, the body of the rule. And it's really difficult to, I mean, you can't really see it, but it sort of frees up right in the middle, and then it gets progressively harder to move as I progress towards the edges. Yeah. And then it, like, frees up right around here. So um, I put a little dab of silicone grease on there, then I wiped it all off, and a lot of dirt came with that, so that was nice. And um, I took a little plastic not metal, always use like plastic or, or wood or something else that's not as hard as metal um, in this little groove right over there right right in there inside the body of the rule I you know picked out some of the dirt but yeah so this one is actually yellowed with age 
Um, it used to be bright white, and now it's sort of this yellow color. I still prefer it to the Picket Eye Saver yellow. I'll link a little picture or something over there. Um, because that was just terrible. Oh yeah, this clanging is the heater turning on. Space heaters in the 60s building, you know. Army of rats dancing around in there. Wearing shining armor, right? Banging against the sides. Um, yeah, so here's another picture of the scales on this thing. Uh, this is the back side. And this is the front. So there you go. Um, yes, Picket Model 300. Fun little rule. Uh, I like to keep it in my backpack so I can show my friends how terrible I am at, at using slide wheels. And here comes the third one. This is the one I'm really excited about. Um, it's the monster slide rule. I've never seen a slide rule with this many scales on it. It's got 34 scales. It's made by Picket. And it comes in this kick-ass leather case with no writing on it at all. The Picket N4T. Vector type log log dual base speed rule. As you can see proudly written right there. This rule has 34 scales as I mentioned before. You can see some of them over there. Uh, let's see if it fills up the whole screen. Yeah, okay. And if I split it over, there's the rest of them. It is a monster. And it's got little helpful um, things there to tell you exactly what each scale does. So for example, up there, you see for the, um, come on, focus. For the uh, cube root scales, it tells you exactly which you know, sets of values you're supposed to use um, by the number of zeros, which, which you know, one of these three little divisions you're supposed to use. And for the square root, it, it has it on there as well. On one side, even number of zeros, and on the other side, an odd number of zeros, you know, for the top and for the bottom, respectively, I think. Yeah. It says Picket Chicago right there. And on the other side, Pickett and Eccles, Chicago, Illinois. And it says copyright applied for, or patent applied for, copyright 1959 there. And this one moves extremely smoothly. You can hear the the clicking as it like sort of moves through here. It, there's got a, it's a little bit of resistance, but it's, man, I love the way this sounds and feels. I mean, I have an acetate, um, Aristo Studio 0968 at, at home, but you know, that one doesn't make this metal scratching sound. But both feel solid, and honestly, I, I, like, I like the way this one feels a little bit better. It feels more industrial, um, and of course, it's American, so how can you go wrong with that, right? Anyway, yeah, so I really am excited about these slide rules that I got. All the markings are great. Uh, everything is pristine, and um, Cello shipped it in a really you know solid box with with a whole bunch of bubble wrap. I'm guessing these are pretty easy to ship because, you know, as compared to some other stuff that I collect like typewriters, for example, those are impossible. Um, you know, nearly impossible to pack properly and guard against all possible you know abuse by the postal shipping system or whatever. But slide rules, you know. All you have to do is keep them from knocking around and keep them from dropping, you know, onto a really hard surface or something and, and dropping hard because you really do not want these to drop. If they bend even a little bit, they become completely useless. But the thing is, there's only one moving part, and I guess two if you count the cursor. And of course, the cursor can go out of alignment. It's happened on the Aristo Studio that I have, but only by a little bit. And um, of course, I'm not going to use it for serious calculation anyway at this point. The thing is with these uh, duplex slide rules, duplex means that there's stuff on both sides. I like these slide rules, but the thing is these cursors need to be lined up perfectly, otherwise you can't transfer values from one side to another. If you're doing a bunch of complex calculations, you know, compound calculations, and you need to use both scales in tandem, or both sides in tandem, a whole bunch of different scales, then uh, you're pretty much screwed if these things don't line up exactly, because you only have three significant digits anyway on a slide rule. If you, you know, screw up even a tiny bit, like if you do that, then all your values are invalid. So you got to make sure that that cursor is lined up properly. Also, 
um, make sure that the seller takes very well lit pictures because it's very hard to tell from pictures alone unless they're very well lit if the scales actually line up properly and if they're true you know if the left and right indices um, line up so anyway yeah uh, as you can tell I'm pretty excited about these slide rules I'm gonna go on the slide, International Slide Rule Museum uh, there's a slide rule Yahoo group and uh, ISRC International Slide Rule Competition they have PDFs upon PDFs of practice problems with little hints on uh, what scales to use to solve the problems so I'm gonna definitely check those out and um, I think it would be worth your while if you if you made it to the end of the video to go check them out uh, I'll link to them down below as well anyway this has been another super V power random video new slide rules thanks for watching and if you like this video be sure to uh, comment most importantly so I know whether you liked it or not and um, rate it and if you so please subscribe thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll catch you next time Till then.